Hello students, in this session we are going to see about outlier analysis. An outlier may indicate variability in measurement or it may indicate experimental errors or a novelty. An outlier is a chance of occurrence within a given data set. In other words, an outlier is an observation that separates from an overall pattern on a sample. There are different types of outliers. First one is univariate and the second one is multivariate. Univariate outliers are identified by looking at a distribution of values in a single feature space whereas multivariate as the name suggests are identified in an n dimensional space. Looking in n dimensional space is very difficult for the human brain. For that we need to train a model to do it for us. Outliers can also come in different flavors depending on the environment. Their classification being point outliers contextual outliers or collective outliers. Point outliers are single data points that are far from the rest of the distribution whereas contextual outliers can be noise in data such as punctuation symbols when realizing text analysis or background noise signals during speech recognition. Collective outliers can be subsets of novelties in data such as a signal that may indicate the discovery of new phenomena as given in the figure. Now we will discuss about them in detail. Point or global outliers. A data point is termed as a global outlier if its value is far from outside the entirety of the data set. For example, it is similar to the global variables in a computer program which can be accessed by any function in the program. An example of a global anomaly is given in the figure. Next we will see the contextual or conditional outliers. A contextual outlier is an outlier in which the data point value deviates from the rest of the data points in the same context. Here the same value may not be considered as an outlier if it occurred in a different context. For a time series data the context is always temporal because its records are of a specific quantity over time. A contextual anomaly value are not outside from the normal global range but are abnormal compared to the seasonal pattern. Next one is the collective outliers. A subset of data points within a data set is considered anomalous if those values as a collection deviate significantly from the entire data set but the value of the individual data points are not themselves anomalous in either a contextual or a global sense. In time series data, one way this can manifest is as normal peaks and valleys occurring outside a time frame when that seasonal sequence is normal or as a combination of time series that is in an outlier state as a group. In this example for collective anomaly, two time series that were discovered to be related to each other are combined into a single anomaly. For each time series, the individual behavior does not deviate significantly from the normal range, but the reality combined anomaly indicated a bigger issue. Next we will see about the most common causes of outliers in a data set. The first one being data entry errors caused by human error. The next one is measurement errors caused by instrument errors. The next is experimental errors caused due to data extraction or experiment errors. Next is the intentional one which is also called as dummy outliers used to test deduction methods. The next is data processing errors caused by data manipulation or unintended mutations. Next is the sampling errors which is due to mixing data from wrong sources. And the last one is natural also called as novelties in data and they cannot be considered as error. In the process of producing, collecting, processing and analyzing data, outliers can come from many sources and hide in many dimensions. Those that are not a product of an error are called as novelties. Now we will see the outlier deduction methods. Deducting outlier is a major importance for any quantitative discipline. In machine learning as well as in any quantitative discipline, the quality of data is as important as the quality of the prediction or the classification method itself. Some of the most popular methods for outlier reduction are Z-score or extreme value analysis which is a parametric method, 
probability and statistical modeling which is again a parametric method, linear regression model, the next one is proximity based methods which is a non-parametric method and the next method is information theory models and the next one is high dimensional outlet deduction methods used for high dimensional sparse data. To detect the various types of outliers, the following features must also be considered. The first feature being choosing the most appropriate model and distribution for each time series. This is a critical step to detect any outlier because time series can behave in various ways like stationary, non-stationary, irregularly sampled, discrete and so on each requiring a different model of normal behavior with a different underlying distribution. The second feature to be considered is accounting for seasonal and trend patterns. Contextual and collective outliers cannot be detected if seasonality and trend are not accounted for in the models describing normal behavior. Detecting both automatically is crucial for an automated anomaly deduction system as the two cannot manually be defined for all data. The third feature is detecting collective anomalies involves understanding the relationships between different time series and accounting for them when detecting and investigating anomalies. Now we will see the four approaches for outlier deduction. The first approach is the statistical approach. This assumes a distribution for the given data set and then identifies outliers using a discordancy test. A discordancy test examines two hypotheses, a working hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. A working hypothesis H is a statement that the entire data set of n objects comes from an initial distribution model F that is given by H is equal to O of i element of F where i is equal to 1 to n. The hypothesis is retained if there is no statistically significant evidence supporting its rejection. A discordancy test verifies whether an object OI is significantly large or small in relation to the distribution F. Assuming that some of the statistic T has been chosen for discordancy testing and the value of the statistic for the object OI is VI then the distribution of T is constructed. Significant probability represented as SP of VI is given by probability of T greater than VI is also evaluated. If SP of VI is sufficiently small then OI is discordant and the working hypothesis is rejected which means that an alternative hypothesis H which states that OI comes from another distribution model G is adopted. The result is dependent on which model is chosen because OI may be an outlier under one model and a perfect value under another. Next we will see the second approach the distance based approach. This generalizes the ideas behind discordancy testing for various standard distributions and its neighbors defined based on their distance from the given object. Several efficient algorithms for mining distance based outliers are available. Now we will see the three algorithms in detail. The first one being indexed based algorithm. Given a data set the indexed based algorithm uses multi dimensional indexing structures such as R trees or KD trees to search for neighbors of each object O within radius d min around the object. Let m be the maximum number of objects within the d min neighborhood of an outlier. Therefore, once m plus 1 neighbors of object O are found, it is clear that O is not an outlier. It has a worst case complexity of big O of n square k where n is the number of objects in the data set and k is the dimensionality. The indexed based algorithm scales well as the dimensionality k increases. This is the advantage of the method. The next method is nested loop algorithm. It has the same computational complexity as the indexed based algorithm but avoids index structures construction and tries to minimize the number of IO. 
the memory buffer space is divided into two halves and the data set is divided into several logical blocks. By choosing the order carefully in which blocks are loaded to each half, I.O. efficiency can be achieved. The third algorithm we are going to see is cell based algorithm. To avoid the complexity of the order of n square computations, a cell based algorithm was developed for the memory resident data sets. Its complexity is big O of c to the power k plus n where c is a constant depending on the number of cells and k is the dimensionality. Here the data space is partitioned into cells with a side length equal to d min divided by 2 into root of k. Each cell has two layers. The first layer is only one cell thick while the second layer is given by seal of 2 into root of k minus 1 rounded up to the closest integer. Cell based algorithms count out layers on a cell by cell basis rather than on object by object basis. The next approach we are going to see is the density based local outlier approach. This approach faces difficulty in identifying outliers if data is not uniformly distributed. In the example figure, a sample of 2D data set containing 502 objects is shown with two clusters. Cluster C1 as can be seen contains 400 objects while cluster C2 contains 100 objects. True additional objects O1 and O2 are clearly outliers as given in the figure. However, by distance based method which was previously discussed only O1 is a reasonable outlier. An object in a local outlier if it is outlying relative to its local neighborhood particularly to the density of the neighborhood. In this case O2 is a local outlier relative to the density of C2. Object O1 is an outlier as well and no object in C1 is mislabeled as outlier. It forms the basis of density based outlier deduction. Unlike previous methods, it does not consider outlier as a binary property. Instead, it assesses the degree to which an object is an outlier. This is the degree of outlierness computed as the local outlier factor represented as LOF of an object. This depends on how isolated the object is with respect to the surrounding neighborhood. This method can detect both global as well as local outliers. The next approach we are going to see is the deviation based approach. It identifies outliers by examining the characteristics of objects in a group. Objects that deviate from this description are called as outliers. Hence the term deviation is typically used to refer outliers. Two techniques are available for deviation based outlier deduction. The first technique sequentially compares objects in a set while the second technique employs an OLAP that is online analytical processing data cube approach. Now we will see some more additional methods for outlier deduction. The first one is Z score. The Z score is a metric that indicates how many standard deviations a data point is from the samples mean by assuming a Gaussian distribution. This makes the method as a parametric one. Very frequently data points are not described by a Gaussian distribution and hence this problem can be solved by applying transformations which is nothing but scaling to a data set. After making the appropriate transformations to the selected feature space of the data set, the Z score of a data point can be calculated as Z is equal to X minus nu by sigma which is nothing but data point minus mean by standard deviation. When computing the Z score for each sample on the data set, a threshold should be specified. Some thumb rule thresholds can be 2.5, 3, 3.5 or even more. This is depicted in the picture given. It shows a bell shaped curve with normal distribution and the standard deviation values. By tagging or removing 
the data points that are laid beyond a given threshold. We are classifying data as outliers and non-outliers. It is given in the figure. Z-score is a simple and powerful method to get rid of outliers in data for parametric distributions in a low dimensional feature space. But for non-parametric problems, DB scan and isolation forest can be a good solution. We will see them in detail. The first one is DB scan. It is nothing but density based spatial clustering of application with noise. Relationships between features, trends and populations in a data set can graphically be represented through clustering methods like DB scan. It can be applied to detect outliers in non-parametric distributions in many dimensions. DB scan is a density based clustering algorithm which is focused on finding neighbors by density given by min points on a n dimensional space with radius k. A cluster can be defined as the maximum set of density connected points in the feature space. DB scan defines different classes of points. They are given in the figure core point. A is a core point if its neighbors defined by epsilon contains at least the same number or more number of points than the parameters min points. Next one is border point. C is a border point that lies in a cluster and its neighborhood does not contain more points than min points, but it is still density reachable by other points in the cluster. And the last one is outlier. N is and the last one is outlier. N is an outlier point that lies in no cluster and it is not density reachable nor density connected to any other point. Thus, this point will have its own cluster. A cluster must satisfy two properties. All points within the cluster are mutually density connected and the next one is if a point is density reachable from any point of the cluster it is part of the cluster as well. At first step, the data should be scaled and the radius epsilon will define the neighborhoods along with min points. After scaling the feature space of the data set, it is time to choose the spatial metric on which DB scan will perform the clustering. They must be chosen based on the problem. Euclidean metric works well for two or more dimensions and for higher dimension feature space, that is for four or more dimensions, the Manhattan metric can be used. Then the parameter epsilon must be chosen according to clustering. If epsilon is too big, many points in the data set will be densely connected. If it is too small, the clustering will result in many meaningless clusters. DB scan estimates the number of clusters by itself. There is no need to specify the number of desired clusters and hence it is an unsupervised machine learning model. Outliers which is nothing but noise will be assigned to minus one cluster. After tagging those instances they can be removed or analyzed. A real world application of DB scan in housing prices is shown in the figure. Red are normal data points and black are outliers. Next, we will see about isolation forest. It is an effective method for detecting outliers or novelties in data. It is based on binary decision tree. To build a tree, the algorithm randomly picks a feature from the feature space and randomly splits value ranging between the maximums and minimums. This is done for all the observations in the training set. To build the forest, a tree ensemble is made averaging all the trees in the forest. Then for prediction, it compares an observation against that splitting value in a node. That node will have two children node on which another random comparison will be made. The number of splitting made by the algorithm on an instance is named path length. As expected, outliers will have shorter path lengths than the rest of the observations. This is shown in the figure. An outlier score can be computed for each observation as s of x comma n is equal to 2 to the power minus e into h of x by c of n, where h of x 
is the path length of the sample x and c of n is the unsuccessful length search of a binary tree n is the number of external nodes. Each observation is given a score ranging from 0 to 1 with value 1 meaning more outlyingness and 0 meaning more normality. With this a threshold can be specified that is 0 0.55 or 0 0.60 for the above example. With this we have discussed few methods for outlier detection both parametric and non-parametric were discussed. Now to conclude a database may contain data objects that do not comply with the general behavior or model of the data. Such data points which are grossly different from or inconsistent with the remaining set of data are called outliers. Most data mining methods discard outliers as noise or exceptions. However, in some applications such as fraud detection, the rare events can be more interesting than the more regularly occurring ones. The analysis of outlier data is referred to as outlier mining. Outliers may be deducted using statistical tests that assume a distribution or probability model for the data or using distance measures or deviation based methods. Various outlier detection algorithms are available through which data set can be clustered into groups so as to retain a specific quality of the data. Thank you. Finally, to conclude a database may contain data objects that do not comply with the general behavior or model of the data. Such data objects which are grossly different from or inconsistent with the remaining set of data are called outliers. Most data mining methods discard outliers as noise or exceptions. However, in some applications such as fraud deduction, the rare events can be more interesting than the more regularly occurring ones. The analysis of outlier data is referred to as outlier mining. Outlier may be deducted using statistical tests that assume a distribution or probability model for the data or using distance measures or deviation based methods. Various outlier deduction algorithms are available through which data set can be clustered into groups so as to attain a specific quality of data. Thank you students.